Hi guys, this is Best Bloomer back with you. Uh, I'm going to uh, switch up my content a little bit. I think Mondays are going to be random rants. <laughs> so uh, if you like my content, uh, content please um, like and share and consider subscribing if you would. Um, so uh, I'm just going to talk about some random things today. I have a video I'm uploading on Kingman, Arizona. And, uh, you know, I'm always looking for the best weather in Arizona because Surprise, Arizona, where I live, is very, very hot in the summers. And so Kingman uh, kind of meets that sweet spot of elevation. And um, so I did a video. We visited it and uh, looked at some uh, new build houses. And I hope this wind isn't too, too uh, distracting. It's uh, 67 here. Uh, and very windy so I'm loving that but so um, he did uh, I think seven worst cities to live in in Arizona and lo and behold you can probably guess this uh, but Kingman was number one on the list <laughs> so uh, but I you know I listened to him and I understand because um, Kingman is in the middle of nowhere and uh, it's on Route 66 which is a you know, kind of a famous historic highway, uh, but it's a pretty small population. There's not much to do around there. Um, they do have some new housing, and, um, so we walk through one of the new builds, and um, that'll be in my video when I get it edited, which is uh, really, <laughs> that's a whole another story. But so you'll get to see that in really nice houses. But he said it's, you know, not a good place to live. There's nothing to do. And the crime rate is pretty high in Kingman, believe it or not. It's one of the, uh, I, I'm thinking in the top 20 or even maybe less than that of crime areas. And that's too bad. Um, we're surprised Arizona is one of the safest cities in um, Arizona. So that's, you know, that's a big check mark for me that I wouldn't like King, Kingman. But anyway, so that's kind of my um, first rant. Uh, then... Um, Next thing I, you know, I was, uh, I, I do watch Fox News, um, I'll admit, but I do kind of uh, switch it around a little bit. And um, Biden had an interview uh, it, the, uh, yesterday, I think, and um, where he was calling Trump um, George Bush. Now, I don't know about you guys out there, but I, you know, I, the guy is um, in the, first stages of dementia I swear I I truly believe he is and I think it's such a sad sad thing that he's being uh, put through this because I truly think he's being put through this um, to get Harris in there as president um, eventually uh, you know I think that the radical left um, that would be their choice but Biden has a name recognition so they've got Biden running out there and it's a sad pathetic thing um, to watch. I just, I can't hardly watch him. He's got a vacant look behind those eyes and it's just, it's terrible, terrible. Then on the flip side, uh, if you ever watch any of Trump rallies, and you want to see a good pep rally, watch one of those. I'm loving those. Uh, you want to get your uh, mood um, elevated, uh, watch those. I get a kick out of his uh, little dance and uh, there's some kids copying that on TikTok which is kind of comical but um, the man has more energy than uh, anyone I've ever seen and has such um, he never forgets anything I mean this man uh, remembering um, names and places and events and uh, just you know at the tip of his tongue he never uh, you know, he never has to pause and think about it or uh, he's just an energetic person. And when I compare him with Biden, I just, any rational, sane person, I don't even see how there could even be any sort of comparison. Aside from the fact that I think that Trump, um, there is, I think there's truly a good and evil in this uh, whole election process. And, um, you know, God and country is top on my list, and I think that that is what's bringing people out and um, 
you know, people can really, really get on board with that and feel passionate about that. Um, good, you know, uh, God and country. I support the police and military. Um, how can anybody not? I don't get that. And if you don't, you know, find your socialist country somewhere else, because it ain't going to be here. And I can tell you the silent majority um, of us out there are not going to uh, stand by. If push comes to shove, um, <laughs> I'd rather be on uh, our side and march against the other side with the military and the police. Uh, okay, so that's, uh, that's another little, uh, not rant necessarily, but um, sometimes some of these things just, you know, they're, they seem to be so apparent to me. But uh, the other thing, here's another one, COVID. I am so tired of this whole subject. Uh, when you have a 99% um, survival rate, my chances, you know, between 60 and 70 years old, you have a one in 100 chance of dying from COVID. You have a one in 103 chance of dying in a vehicle accident. Hmm. Well, go figure. I don't think then that we really have to worry uh, that much about it and if you do then you stay home and um, protect yourself but the rest of the population should not have to and it's caught such I don't know it's just taken on a life of its own that it's beyond any sort of uh, rationality I mean I, I just that's, a, that's another thing I just don't get um, you know I have a one in six chance of dying of uh, heart disease one in seven of cancer and one in 88 of suicide but yet i'm gonna uh, hover in my house and worry about a one in a hundred chance of dying of covid so all those uh, people out there who feel that's necessary i hope you feel good about yourselves that you stayed in for months and months and months and maybe you somebody lived because you stayed in well i don't know if that's what makes you feel okay about it uh, but, you know, study the facts. And I, you know, the president, uh, it's interesting that he being um, overweight and in that high risk age group came down with it and recovered so quickly. And I'm not saying everybody will. I mean, there's a risk of living, period. Uh, but again, if you use your brain, you know, and you're rational about it, I think we really do not have to worry to the extent that the media is trying to get us to worry. Um, so that's some of my uh, thoughts for today. Uh, I got to get that other video uploaded and um, I finished the book Blackout. That's one of the, uh, it's a book on the bestseller list by Candace Owens and oh my gosh, there's another book that I think should be required reading. Uh, it's, you know, she's a, a black woman, very, very uh, intelligent black woman who sees things through rational eyes. She's not in any way a victim, doesn't take that stance. Um, you'd love the book. And I want to do a quick book review. Uh, there's so many good quotes in there, so much good information that uh, she has that... Um, you know, if that if her information, the true information was out there on the media, uh, things would calm down quite a bit, I think, um, instead of the media fanning that victim mentality and dividing the blacks and the whites. It's, you know, but OK, that's for another day. Um, I'm going to get off of here. I hope that you can hear me with, the, you know, the wind and all. Um, but have a really good Monday and start of your week out there, okay? And stay safe. Talk to you later, guys. Bye-bye.